Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Destiny. Happy Father's Day. Would you stand on your feet with us this morning as we enter into worship and praise? We get the opportunity to praise the Father, the Good Father, the Holy One. So we're going to do that. So Jesus, we just invite you to come and have your way this morning in our service. We turn our attention and our heart and our focus to you, and we say, come and have your way. We worship you in Jesus' name. We pray everybody can say amen. Amen, amen. amen. Today, today, and 
live forevermore. There's no greater name. No other name that can save the living he can and deliver. restore. Whoa, Jesus the same. Yes, today, today, and forevermore. There is no other name. of Jesus yes, and if we're we not doing that what are we here for Amen. to praise King Jesus yes. we worship you father thank you, and we Jesus. thank you God that you are the miracle yeah. worker Hallelujah. yeah we worship you Jesus I cannot explain it this may not make sense I know what it looks like, but I choose to go against that. And I'm speaking something different. I'm speaking something different. I'm claiming something different. Expecting something different. I cannot explain. It may not make sense. This may not make sense. I know what it looks like, but I choose to go against that. And I'm speaking something different. I'm speaking something different. I'm claiming something different. Expecting something different. This week, this week will be will be a week for a week for miracles. Miracle. This week, this week will be will be a week for a week for miracles. Miracles. This week, this week will be. A week for a week for miracle, 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 miracle. Your miracle is on the way. I feel like we're supposed to declare that again. 
Jesus, we say yes. Our expectation is open and ready. Our hearts are ready to receive what you have for us. And I hear God saying this morning that open your hearts because he's ready to come and spend time with you. He's ready to be intimate with you. Did you know God is our father? And he says, come, sit in my lap. Let me love on you. I don't know what your relationship with your father is like, but today we get to honor the father. I remember as a child, my dad would pull me in and pull me to the altar and I would feel his tears dripping down my neck as he would declare and pray things over us. And today we do the same thing with our girls. We pull them to the altar and we pray and declare. And if you are missing that in your life, I'm here to tell you there's a good father who says, I'm doing the same thing over you. Regardless of whether your father is here or he's passed or he's in heaven or wherever. God the Father is saying, I'm here. Let me pull you in. Rest on my chest. Let me love on you. The good Father who's here for you. He sees you. He knows your tears. He knows your heart. He knows what you're crying out for. So we're going to worship the good Father. Would you join us in singing about him? Yes, Jesus. It's who I am, it's who I am, it's 
sing that you're more real. You're more real, yes. And you're more real than the ground I'm standing on.
Bless all the fathers that are represented here, Lord. We thank you, Father God, for all that you do and all that you continue to do for us. We love you. We honor you. And it's in Jesus' mighty and glorious name we all say amen and amen. Amen. Let's give our praise and worship team a hand. Awesome time this morning in praise. And good morning, Destiny. I want to say happy Father's Day to all of our fathers in the audience today and give yourselves a hand for being here. And then after that, you can have a seat. <laughs> well, it is Sunday morning, 10 a.m. Thank you, all of your smiling, beautiful faces for being here. We have a great message for you. But at this time, guess what time it is? It's offering time. And no, Ace is not here, so you got me. I don't have that much energy as Ace, but I'm going to get through this, okay? <laughs> well, during offering, we're like, oh, okay, is that time again? But guess what? You get to give. You get to give to the Lord who has given to you. So, like I said earlier, this morning I was praying and asking the Lord to give me something for you guys. And this is what he gave. A, a, a a scripture that we hear all the time but we're gonna hear it again all right is luke 6 verse 38 give and it will be given to you a good measure pressed down shaken together running over will be poured into your lap for with the measure you use it will be measured to you well what does that say pastor vanessa what you're trying to tell us today what i'm telling you is giving sets the things in motion you cannot reap what you don't sow. Have you ever tried just planting something? Well, you, if you didn't plant, nothing's going to come up, right? And that's in every area of life. If you want, to, want things to prosper and do good or you're looking for certain things to happen in your life, you got to plant into that for it to come up. So same thing with giving, what we're talking about right now. So you give... If you don't plant seeds in the ground, they will not grow. But if you eventually plant seeds, they will produce fruit. If you don't sow, you don't reap. So how we handle what we have in our hands right now, how you handle that money that's in your pocket right now, that's going to determine what happens next. So use what God has given you and move in the right direction. He's giving you something. Use it and move in the right direction. Amen? Our giving opportunities are on the screen. If you need an envelope, the envelopes are by the doors. You put them into the bucket on your way out. Father God, thank you for the opportunity that we all have right now to give into your kingdom. Help us, Lord, make wise decisions with the money that you have given us, Lord. Father God, bless every person that is going to be given out of the abundance of what it is that you have provided for them this we pray in the mighty and precious name of jesus amen and we want to welcome pastor carlos with the message this morning Ziggy, zig. morning everybody how we doing today got the barbecue grills fired up ready to go ain't you we ain't going away yet <laughs> it's Father's Day. Yeah. One of them days you see nothing on side the road. <laughs> Nobody look for anything. I mean, I had to remind Longy when he sent me the song list. I was like, you know, it's Father's Day. He came back and said, whoops. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> right? It's just one of those days. But fathers are very, very, very important in the family. And sometimes we look as fathers to try to figure out where we can connect, where can we learn, where can we grow, where can we understand this thing called manhood and fatherhood. And so we look to society, wrong answer. They confused, they don't know who they are right now. I have found that if I want to understand how to be a man and how to be a father, I can't call Whirlpool because they make washing machines. I can't call a Tesla shop because they make electric vehicles. But I can read God's word, who is the author and the finisher 
of all mankind, who says, I made you in my own image. So if I want to learn to be a man, if I want to learn about being a father, there's no greater place to go and no greater person to talk to than our own heavenly father. Amen? And so today, we're going to spend a little bit of time. Mamas, it ain't about you today. At least for the next 30 minutes. After that, things going to change, men. You're on your own again at that point, right? But for this time frame, it's about the fathers, right? And we're looking in Luke uh, chapter 15, and we're going we're gonna to get to the reading of the word, but let me set the stage. Jesus was dealing with, once again, the Pharisees, right? And it starts off, it's three different parables. But it starts off and he says, Then all of the tax collectors and sinners drew near to him to hear him. And the Pharisees and the scribes complained, saying, This man receives sinners and eat with them. So he spoke this parable. Who was he? Jesus. He spoke this parable, saying, Then he taught about the lost sheep, right? And he said that the shepherd had a hundred sheep, and one of them drifted away, so he left the 99 to go and find that 100, I mean that one, and he did not leave until he found that one, and then when he found that one, he put him on his shoulder, and he rejoiced, he brought him back, and he rejoiced, he was happy, and then the next thing he talked about was a coin, a lost coin, and the woman lost a coin, and she continued, she turned on all the lights, she was searching, she found a coin, and then she called up all our neighbors, hey, I found my coin, yes, and she celebrated, and then he says, likewise, your father in heaven also celebrate with his angels when one soul repents and come back home. And so today we're going to talk about the lost son. But we're not really talking about the son. We're talking about the father who was there for the son in the midst of everything that transpired. So right now, please stand for the reading of God's word. Thought you was getting out of it, huh? Nope. <laughs> and it says, Then he said, A certain man had two sons. The younger son of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falls to me. So he divided to them his livelihood. And not many days after, the younger son gathered all together, journeyed to a far land, and there wasted his possessions with prodigal living. Dropping down to verse 20, it says, and, his, and he arose and came to his father. But when, his, when he was a, still a great ways off, his father saw him. And had compassion and ran to him and fell on his neck and kissed him. Mwah, 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 my boy's back. And the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in your sight. And I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servant, Bring out the best robe and put it on him. And put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. And bring out the fattened calf and kill it. And let's, let us eat and be merry. For my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they begin to be merry. This is the reading of God's word. Thanks be to God. Please have your seats. We didn't heard over and over and over and over and over in every church we done went into about the prodigal son. Right? We didn't heard that story over and over, back and front, back and front. But the Bible doesn't tell us about a prodigal son. The Bible really tells us about a prodigal living, the lost son. And in this particular passage, there was a father that had two sons. And one of the sons just had outward sinful nature. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. The boy wanted to party like a rock star. But the other boy, he had issues too. That's another message at another time, but he had issues as well. 
Because he was right in the father's house and feel like he was doing good, but he had attitude. You know, you come to church with attitude. I ain't calling no names, right? I ain't calling no names. But we're talking about right now the father himself and how the father navigated life with his family. See, what I have come to learn over my lifespan is my dad, without, with all of his shortcomings and all of the issues that he may have had, the one thing that I never questioned was whether or not my dad loved me. I know my dad loves me. Right? I know that. And as a result of that, it helped me to navigate life. But that was a period of time in my life where I had some resentment against my dad because remember I told you guys once before I had to grow up pretty early, change some things to provide and take care of the family. And I didn't realize I, I had anger against my dad. I had resentment against my dad because I was robbed of something in my life. And God dealt with me. And here I'm about to punch you in your face before I give you a good word. But here, here, let me tell you what God told me. He says, the way you feel about your earthly father represents the way you feel about me. So I'm telling you right this moment, if you got any hard feelings, any headaches, any madness against your earthly father, that is the same way you feel about your heavenly father. That's mean, Pastor. No, that's real. So you need to make sure that you clear your heart and get right with your dad. Because what I came to realize is that you give what you got. And if you're giving what you got, that means you're reaping what you sow. And our fathers may not have been perfect, but they did what they thought was the best thing to do. Right? And so we got to learn from those things, and we got to learn what's right, and learn how to navigate, and go to God's word, and come to have a greater appreciation for the fathers that we have. Because let me tell you something. Without daddies, without daddies, things will be way worse. God created fathers. Who are we to take them away? And the, word, the first thing that man tried to do is always, the devil has always tried to destroy the family, and the first thing he always destroys in the family is the father. So we don't need to complain about fathers. We need to cover them in prayer, right? Cover them in prayer. Now that I didn't say it all that, nice word time. Let's get busy. The Bible has always been a great, the greatest resource and a tool to understand our purpose and reason while here on earth. In Luke chapter 15, it consists of three parables, three different parables. The lost sheep, the lost coin, and the lost son. The parable of the lost son demonstrates God's love for the lost and the joy he experiences when they return. Here we will see a son totally disrespect his father by demanding his inheritance now because he just can no longer wait out the proper time. After everything that happens, the father's love for his son is more powerful than he is, is so powerful that he can easily look past his son's disrespectful and sinful nature. The father represents God. So I want to give you four quick examples of the father. The first one is the father's reaction. What did the father do after hearing his son demand? The answer is the father gave his son what he demanded and respected his free will. Remember what the boy said. Now he says, then he said the man had two sons and the younger says, father, the younger one said, father, give me my portion of good that falls upon me. And so he did that, right? Normally they don't get that until the father's dead. So in essence, what he was telling the dad, I don't care about what you're doing. It's all about me. Give me my goods. And some of you probably sitting there saying, well, why would the father just go along and give that? Because our heavenly father give each and every last one of us free will. And the father was saying to his son at that moment, I may not agree with what you want, but it's, it's your decision. So I respect your decision to have this. And so he did that. When Adam fell in the Garden of Eden, 
God didn't like the fact that his son just fell into sin. But he still loved him throughout the process. He continued to love him no matter what. And you may have children that's making decisions that you totally disagree with. And you know it's bad for them. If they Now watch this now. Don't go back and say what well, pastor said. At six years old, I can do what I want to do. No, pastor didn't say that. If they are of age, they have free will. And just because you disagree with it, understand that. But they have free will. Right? And you holding them, the only thing you're doing is prolonging what they're going to do anyhow. The boy has some wild oats in him. He needed to go out and do some crazy stuff. And so the father respected his wishes and went on and allowed him. He split up everything and they said the boy went off and he started living a wild life, right? He went off and started doing his own thing. The second point was the father remembered. See, I didn't go out of order this time. The father remembered. What was the question? I mean, what, what was the father doing when he noticed the son? So here you go. We got to fast forward a little bit. The son goes out. The son spends up all of his Money. Remember the prodigal living. It's not the prodigal son. It's the prodigal living. What does the word prodigal mean? It means wasteful. It's striving. You know, Pastor Joe been teaching me this, this expository stuff, and I'm still learning how to say the word. But I understand that the word means that there's a deeper meaning for things, and sometimes it ain't what we thought it was. And so the boy went off and did wasteful living, prodigal living. He went out and spent all of his money. He found everything that he wanted to do, partied like a rock star, drank up everything, the whole nine yards. Now he broke. And so being broke, he went to a countryside and he's a Jewish person. He got hooked up with some other folks and, and, and started living with them as a servant, feeding pigs, a Jew feeding pigs, right? And then the Bible says he came to his senses. Anybody ever came to their senses? Yep. See, when we come to our senses, things change, right? And it says he came to his senses. And look at what he said. He didn't say, I'm going home. He didn't say, I'm going to my village. He says, I'm going back to my father. And I'm going to apologize to my dad. I'm going to repent. And I'm going to tell him all of these great and wonderful things. Which brings us to the third point. The third example is the father restored. What did the father do once he seen his son? The father humbled himself. That's the first thing. See, we try to hold things in the dad and, and let our pride get in the way of stopping us from doing things. But the Bible, he humbled himself. He forgave his son. Right? Free will. He forgave his son. And if you don't think that's the right thing to do, our Heavenly Father forgives us. We do sinful things all the time. But when we humble ourselves and we get right before God, He forgives us. Right? And it says that He forgave His Son. And then He extended compassion and grace. See, that's what a daddy does. Fathers are not only a disciplinarian, He's not only authority. He's a representation of our Heavenly Father. And there's times when a father just needs to extend compassion and grace. Regardless to what's going on. That's my son. That's my boy. That's my child. That's my girl. And no matter what transpire, that's my child. And I will still love them regardless. I didn't like that decision. I didn't like their choice. But it don't stop the fact that he mine. And I'm going to always love them, right? And so the father did that. And without hesitation, he immediately restored his son. And the scripture tells us, but the father said to his servant, bring out a robe. And put it, bring out the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. What's the best robe in the house? You come to my house, the best robe in the house is mine. Right? It's mine. My wife might say it differently, but it's mine. And he said, put out the best robe. Why? His son come back 
all bust up with sin. Looking like sin, smelling like sin, acting like sin. But the father says, no, put the best robe on my son. Forgiveness is extended. Love is here. Grace and mercy is upon him. And the father said, for God so loved the world that he said the best that heaven had to offer to cover our sins. And here this father did exactly the same thing. He didn't run up to his son and say, I told you not to do that. No, he didn't do that. He walked up to him and he threw the best that he had upon him. And the boy was trying to say, but, 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 but dad, now I'm, I'm, I'm trying to apologize. lie. I ain't trying to hear that boy. You, you're going to lie anyhow. Bring the best out for him. Put a ring on his finger. What did the ring signify? Who he is. This is my son. Right, wrong, bad, ugly, he's my boy. Put sandals on his feet. Why? Because servants and slaves ran around barefooted. This is my boy. And I'm going to love him throughout this process. Daddy, I'm still hurting. I got you, son. I will love you throughout this process. You belong to me Heaven is for you. I will open up the windows of heaven and begin to pour out blessings upon you. Why? Because just like the son was living prodigal in his wasteful ways and being extravagant, the father was also being prodigal because he was extravagant with the compassion and the grace that he extended toward his son. It's not always about the heavy hand. God has been showing me you have two hands, one to hit and the other to hug, and you need to know the balance between the two. When your son, when your daughters need to be disciplined, discipline them. But you still love them, and you still hug them, and you still take care of them, and you still walk out life with them regardless. When Jesus came out of the water, they had a big voice came down from heaven. And it says, this is my boy whom I'm well pleased. This, this father came out and he said, this is my boy. And I love my boy. And then the next thing he did was he rejoiced. He threw a party. Whenever you and I give our life to the Lord, Whenever we get right and come to our senses and get back with the Lord, the Bible says that all of heaven starts to rejoice and starts to celebrate because a soul just came back home. And this is what was happening right this moment. The father was celebrating that my son, he was dead, but now he's alive. He was lost, but now he's found. So yeah, we want to discipline, but don't ever let discipline supersede the might and the power of God's love. I want to challenge every father today. Don't let the world describe to you what a father should be. Go to the ultimate father, the heavenly father, and say just what the song say, Abba, I belong to you. Teach me, coach me, mentor me. Find you a good godly man, one that looks like God's word says he should look and walk out life with him and glean from him and just learn and learn. Fathers, we got to have compassion for our children. We got to have grace for our children. We got to teach them what right looks like because your sons will mimic you. You teach what you know, but you reproduce who you really are. Your daughters will love the next man that's you. So if you're a knucklehead and your daughter brings home a knucklehead, don't be mad. Look in the mirror. Right? Look in the mirror. But we got to learn this compassion thing. I had to learn this compassion thing. And I also had to realize that with all of his flaws, no matter what, 
I never, ever, ever question the fact of whether or not my daddy loves me. And as a result, I'm able to love my sons. Even when they act like their mama, I still, I love my sons, right? When they start acting prideful and crazy like mama, I go, come on here, son, bring out the robe, put him on him. He acting like his mama. <laughs> no barbecue for me. Anyhow, <laughs> get back here. Fathers, in a minute, I'm going to call you up because we want to pray for you because we don't want the world to control who a father is. God has already directed who a father is. God has already directed manhood, and that's where we need to go to get our answers. Not the television, not newspapers, not social media, but to God. Amen? The father's greatest compassion for his son is another example of our Heavenly Father's love for us. The Father does not wait for us to clean ourselves up. He welcomes us back as we are and then loves us through the process. Being a father is the greatest gift a man can get from God. So more than anything else, love your children and never hesitate for one second to extend compassion and grace when needed. Be the example of your Heavenly Father. Happy Father's Day to all of our destiny dads. We love you and we salute you. And right now, I want to call up my senior pastor so that he can pray for all of the fathers in the house. At the same time, fathers, please stand so that we can know who's here. Don't be shy. Come on, let's give him a hand. We know it's not easy being a father. But we want you to know that God has your back. And we have your back. And we're going to be right here to walk out life with you. So fathers, come up right now so our pastor can pray for each and every last one of us. Come on, let's give them a hand as they're coming up here. Come on! Come on, let's give them a big round of applause. Honor our father. Oh, you made it, huh? Come on, mamas. We really honored you during Mother's Day. Okay? It's your turn. Can I ask you to do this? Can you turn towards me? So I just want to say something to you. And if we're going to pray God's blessing, then you can turn out. Um, I just celebrated my 36th anniversary. Okay? And I got to be truthful with you. Possibly 20 of those years, it was all about the boys. My whole life was just about being with the boys. I like what Pastor Collins was sharing in that second point, when the story tells us that he came to his senses. It took me 20 years to come get to my senses. And I know that I know that our wives are probably praying that we'll come to our senses earlier. And I'm sure God was saying that, man, this boy is still wanting to do his own thing. But it took me a while. But I'm so glad that God was patient with me. And most of all, I'm so glad that my family, my wife was patient with me. Right? And I share that only because we're all going through the process. Every single one of us, including the senior pastor and the executive pastor, we're all going through a process. We're learning how to be fathers. We're learning how to be husbands. Amen, somebody? We're all going through this process. And I want to pray, first of all, that God's grace continues to extend to us so that while we're going through the process, coming to our senses, that God's grace will cover us. And, God's, and then once we come to our senses and say, you know what? I love my family. I want to, I want my, I want to be the greatest husband to be the greatest father that I could possibly be to my family. And that's when I know that you're going to experience the greatest power of God in our lives. Amen. Once you turn around and we're going to have the families extend their hands to you. And we're going to pray blessing over you. So once you extend your arms out towards them so we're going to pray God's blessing. Lord, we're so grateful for this message. Always reminding us, Lord God. Always reminding, Father, that you are our priority. 
And that, Lord, that your love supersedes our shortcomings. Your love supersedes our inadequacies and our weaknesses. And, Lord, I lift up our fathers to you, Lord God. Father, I pray, Lord God, that they will continue to give their family attention and affection and affirmation. I pray that you would continue to empower them by your spirit so that even, especially in this season of life, especially in this time of life and time in history, Lord God, with the families being so attacked, Father, I pray, Lord God, for backbone. I pray for the spirit of authority to be upon our fathers, to father to conquer the enemy, Lord God. Father, I thank you, Lord God, that you would give them that, that warrior spirit to fight for their family. Father, to fight for family time. Always fighting for their family. Always making their wives feeling like, Father, I, I'm on their side. We're not fighting against each other. Lord, I pray that in Jesus' name, that your anointing of a father will come upon them so that, Lord God, that they will be able to mold and shape these young men and women in their lives. Continue to bless them. Continue to pour out your love upon them. I so appreciate our fathers. In Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people say, amen. Come on, let's give our fathers a big hand. Thank you, fathers. You may go back to your seat. As, you, as they go back to the seat, somebody slip them $100 or $20. You know, just, just, just be a blessing. Be a blessing to them. <laughs> Come on, let's give Pastor Carlos another big round of applause for giving us a great word. I love listening to some of the, the old parables, but I love it when uh, a, a teacher will take it and give it a different slant, a different angle by the Holy Spirit. Uh, listen, I want you to stand to your feet, but before we end, I'm going to ask uh, Titus. Titus, come. Titus is going to back to college, and whoever's USC fans, he doesn't like USC. <laughs> Father, as he goes back to UCLA campus, Lord, we pray, Father God, that your anointing and your presence will be upon him. We pray, Father, that you would protect him and guard him. Father God, order his steps. But, Lord, I pray most of all, Lord God, that he will come to know you in a greater way in this next season. I pray, Father, as he continues to trust in you, that, Lord God, that you would continue to bless him. Father, he's a blessed man from a blessed family. And I pray, Lord God, that you would cover him, Lord God. Cover him and protect him. Bless him. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. Come on, let's give Titus a big round of applause. And Pastor Carlos, I'm going to let you pray the blessing since you brought the message. It was so good. My family said they were going to celebrate Father's Day this year on Saturday. So I'm saying, okay, you know, I can't preach. Yeah, I can't have the message on my heart if my family's coming over. So I said, PC, tag your head. You got the message. So uh, Pastor Carlos, we come and pray a blessing over us. Hey, listen, I just want to encourage all the dads out here. Press in, lean into God. Right? You want your family to flourish? It's on your shoulder. That's why you have those big shoulders. Not to go to the beach, but to carry your family. Amen? And make sure that you do it the right way. Guide, guard, and govern them. And you get help yourself. Heavenly Father, we just thank you. We thank you, Lord, that you created fathers. And so we thank you for this day. We celebrate you more than anything else, Father God. And now that we've been equipped, now that we've been inspired, we send our people out here to live a victorious life, knowing that your words set the stage for how we are to live on a day-by-day -day basis. So, Father, let us be salt. Let us be light. Let us be your children in everything that we do. Until we all come back together, we give you and only you all of the praises, all of the honor, and all of the glory that you so rightfully deserve. In the mighty and the powerful name of Jesus, the church in agreement say, Go in peace. We'll see you next week. They got a photo boot in the back. Go take pictures.